The Honda Accord is all new, but one thing that's different from Honda and Toyota, Toyota went to the Japanese design. Honda went to the European fastback design. This is a 2023 Honda Accord Touring in lunar silver metallic over black leather interior. The Touring, you're basically getting every single feature. LED headlamps and daytime runnings that's setting in the front. I like how it goes inwards more, pushing out the gloss black grille. So it gives more of that style for the European design. It's an active shutter grille for the first time. Your front parking sensors, and then on the top underneath the headlamp assembly, you'll get that to complement yet again. More simple into the front, but it's supposed to be this way because this is a touring trend. It's more for luxury not really for sport. We no longer have a 2.0 liter sport trim either, which that particular one had over 250 horsepower. The motivation underneath the hood was kind of the sweet spot. The lower's getting the gloss black, also on the side skirts, taking it even further on the rear bumper. Six inches wider front track, retune suspension for a chassis, but it's also more smooth. It's a 19 inch machine finish alloy with black inserts. When you option the base sport hybrid, 19 inch EXL hybrid, we'll get the 17 inch. Sport L hybrid, we'll get a 19 inch matte black. A curb weight at 3,532 pounds. Weight distribution, 61.39. The sleek inspired fastback design for the roof basically a slope roof line. It gives more of a motion design element when you're looking at it at a side profile. When you option the Sport L Hybrid, which I have a review already posted, I'll link it to the end of the video so you can see the differences from the exterior elements. It will make it look more sporty. However, it's not gonna do anything to the performance. The same suspension setup is gonna be on all of them. So a Strut McPherson front suspension, a multi-link, rear suspension. Both the front and the rear will have a stabilizer bar. When you option the hybrid in this 11th generation, you're looking at 46 MPGs for the highway, 41 MPGs for the city in this 2.0 liter inline four-cylinder hybrid engine. Now we're going to lose eight horsepower, but we're going to gain 15 pound-feet of torque. It's going to all be paired to a CVT transmission and it will produce 204 horsepower and 247 pound-feet of torque. The LED headlamps emphasize the width and the sleekness of this sedan and paying heritage to the 1970s Honda with the badging that's smaller in the rear. More of a classic setup. Even on the lower, you'll have the reverse parking sensors in a reverse camera. Quick release going to 16.7 cubic feet of storage with a bag holder on both sides. Underneath the floor gets the automatic pump. Split fold the rear bench in the back at a 40-60 split. That's going to increase the cargo to the Honda Accord Touring. Going inside the all new Honda Accord Hybrid Touring, which is gonna get every single option that you can get. Headroom starts at 37.5 inches. Legroom, 42.3 inches. Black leather bucket front seats, 10-way power adjustment for the driver, four-way power adjustment for the passenger, heated and ventilated. The dashboard integrates into the door panel with the standard honeycomb that goes into the air vents, the gloss black and the dual climate control setup with two USB-C ports, wireless charging pad, gloss black around the gear lever in the driver mode select. Clicking into the driving mode, you got the Econ, normal, sport, full EV when the battery is charged for it, the key fob for the new Honda Accord. It's going to be soft where you rest your arms, open up inside, and it's a deep storage pocket with a 12 volt. Three spoke leather wrap steering wheel with adaptive cruise control, lane keep assist, the paddle shifters and stocks. 
A gauge cluster can go through an array of information, including having the navigation inside for you. Heads up display, because this is the touring. 12.3 navigation, Google built in, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, Sirius XM, streaming Bluetooth audio, Amazon Alexa, 4G Wi-Fi hotspot, Honda Link. We have a reverse camera with trajectory. The lines expand when you turn the wheel any direction and you can change the camera layout. The dashboard is flat with the premium Bose sound system, which is 12 speakers and you get a touch of gloss black. That's going to separate the dash with a volume knob for the infotainment screen. Driver's side gets manual seat adjustments. Everyday material is gonna be on the top, but it's still soft to touch with one touch up and down for the front windows. Storage pocket that has a beverage holder in the front with a moon roof. Going into the back at six foot three, pretty easy. The opening is wide enough and tall enough and headroom complements at 37.2 inches. Legroom, 40.8 inches. Two USB-C ports, air vents, and storage behind only the passenger seat. The floor is not completely flat. The door panel gets the same materials as the front. Harder, pretty much on the top, soft where it needs to be. Heated rear seats because this is the Touring with a large beverage holder cut out for it. Sitting into the center is definitely doable. Headroom is not so bad because we don't have a pano, we only have a moonroof. Leg space is about the same. I will be sharing feet, but the rails are pushed up enough, so it gives a pretty decent amount of space for that. Sharing butt and shoulder space only because the leather upholstery contours in more than the cloth. The driver assist feature also has been updated for the full redesign of this vehicle, which means the front the camera system can detect objects better, especially for reversing and when you're using the adaptive cruise control. So this car all around has been retuned, even the seats, to help for your torso, making it a little bit more wide for a more comfortable drive. I like the fact that Honda has went this extent. Toyota also has went the extent to do full refreshes on some of their vehicles also, but a lot of the Europeans, they are just doing a shell over the vehicle, meaning they're not doing nothing to the suspension, nothing to the seats, maybe the design. Maybe some of them are adding some horsepower or torque, but really nothing compared to what Honda is doing. Hybrid, this is an all new engine option. They still offer the 1.5 liter turbo, 192 over 192 horsepower and torque. All of them, again, will be paired to that CVT transmission. No manual option is available. So what we're gonna do now is show you what eight horsepower less does with 15 pound feet of torque more than the prior gen. So it's a total of 204 horsepower and 247 pound-feet of torque. And to do this test, we obviously have to put it into sport mode. We're gonna stop right here. We're gonna give her a go. It's a settled drive. It's not gonna throw you back tremendously. You're getting over 40 MPGs. I mean, you gotta have a give and take here. Obviously, the disadvantages to start off with is when you option the Touring. This is the only way you can get these features unless you do it aftermarket where the dealer adds it on. I wish that they had packages because it would be a lot more user friendly considering they have a range of trims for the hybrid. But when you go into the base, they only have two trim options in which you can't even option leather seats nor can you get this 12.3 touch screen or the heads up display. The list goes on and on. What if I don't want a hybrid? Other things that kind of make it a little bit on the disadvantage if you're not at the tier of spending around $40,000 is the exterior highlights. It's not going to be as athletic until you go into the Sport, the Sport L or the Touring in order to get the gloss black elements. Yes, you can option similar things to an HPD and you could probably do some aftermarket stuff. But 
I kind of want the car as a package when I buy it. Other things that I kind of wish they would have altered a little bit, the layout for the dash. Obviously, it's a wider interior. You have more leg space than the Toyota Camry. But it's the same design as the Civic, which I'm fine with the look. I think it's awesome, but it's nothing compared to the pilot differences in which I would like to see maybe a storage pocket because what sedan gives you a storage pocket? It would be nice to have it in front of the passenger side. Braking, you can stop on a dime. We're in the Touring and we do not have a power release trunk lid, which might sound like it's nitpicking, but we're kind of at the price point. We don't have any hydraulic struts underneath the hood. I'm gonna give her a go from here. I do like the engine note that filters in when you give it a little go. And it is pretty quick for the most part. Getting those MPGs to complement it the things that really set this apart for me is the fact that this is a 100% rebuilt vehicle. The suspension, the braking, the engine, the interior. No automotive industry has went to this extent to make a complete change of a vehicle. And I get it. This is what you should do. But if you're comparing it to the European design that it's going after, none of them are doing that. The next thing besides the MPGs is the quality of the ride. It's quiet, composed. Now when you get into the base models, the 1.5 turbo, it's gonna be a little bit more noisy. The sound deadening is not as airtight. But this thing is just, you glide. Some of the design elements has some similarity to, similarity to Volkswagen and a little bit of Audi, but again, European design. The other, everything is now digital. When you're thinking Honda, you're not necessarily thinking all this technology. They really went above and beyond. This 12.3 screen really makes me not want to go to the 1.5 turbo, even though I'm not a huge fan of hybrid vehicles. I do like them better than full electric vehicles. Turn radius, it's gonna receive about two lanes. This is every day. It's more of a touring car, like a cruiser. It's not something that's gonna be set to go on the track. And even with the last generation 2.0 turbo with over 250 horsepower, yes, it's fast and it's elegant, but when you get to the Accord level, you kinda of wanna have that happy medium of luxury and you still get some performance with great MPGs. So the full refresh, Honda really did nail it. There's some things they can tweak over the years. For the most part, I mean, you got a faster QI charger in this than you do in the Toyota. This styling element is more sleek and sporty on the exterior, but it's a little bit more stealth-like in the front and the rear compared to Toyota. And it is more safer because every single thing has been retuned to make this the all new Honda Accord. I like to thank Ocean Honda for giving us this 2023 Honda Accord touring for our car review. If you're already a subscriber, thank you for being part of the Hawkeye community. If not, I don't know what you're waiting for. Click the next video, which is the Honda Accord Sport L hybrid, the subscribe button. Check out the merchandise website, Instagram, leave a comment and a like.